The explorer Wilfred Thesinger, who arrived as a British officer in Oman in 1945, the soldier Charles Butt, who arrived there 20 years later in 1966, and most recently Edward Grabson, were very active in Oman during very specific periods historically, ethnographically, and in shifting agency both as archive and artistically. Reina and I have spoken of the thousands of photographs and the hours spent selecting the specific ones for this exhibition. We have discussed at length the various ways in which this material was interpreted sociologically and historically. And the main question Reina posed to me was, I wonder what a final phase of this exhibition might look like, part four. A chapter of self-portraiture in all men, all men who's taking photographs of themselves. And she asked me, does this work have a local chapter? I point to this image here. This developed into discussions of private and public space, of social taboos and where this material would fall. So in turn, I spent some time going through my own personal archive of artists I've worked with for some examples to complement this exhibition, or let us say, to propose that chapter four. There is a very distinct tradition of portraiture developing in Oman from the mid-20th century, in particular by Rabha Mahmoud. Only three formal schools existed in Oman before 1970, and art education wasn't introduced until 1980. So, as a girl growing up in the early 60s, she taught herself to paint. As a woman from the interior, she chose those around her as her subject, depicting large-scale, colorful portraits of women from the villages in their most private spaces, in bright textiles and cloths at home, on the streets, and in all parts of the world. I mention Rabha as she is one of our most important and acclaimed Omani artists, but her practice emerged at a time when something was very prevalent, portraiture and photography of famous men, and in particular, one very famous man. <laughs> and I show you now Saeed Aralia's Museum of Modern Art. In this frame, I take you to Old Muscat, an area of Oman called Matra, which borders the water, and you will see many photographs of this throughout the exhibition. Sayyid Ghali al Said recently opened a building there to create a museum called Sayyid Ghali's Museum of Modern Art, serving as a living archive of what it was like to live in Oman in the 1960s. The rooms are exact replicas constructed with personal archive material, small bunk beds and mud walls, and flyers and photographs of our Nakhla, the moment when His Majesty Sultan Qaboos came to power. More than this, she intersected public and private personal history and collective histories by displaying her personal family photographs of the royal family during these pivotal moments throughout the house. Previously open only to friends, this museum is now open for the general public to visit. Now this is not to say we are not private people, but a heritage exists of sharing deeply personal material, in particular when it might have a greater collective resonance. So I will now describe ways in which this has been done in contemporary art. Something which is not widely known of women is that we are pioneers in what can be described as new media art. Hassan Mir is the founder of an Omani collective called The Circle, which emerged at a time where very little was done like this throughout the region. During the 8th Cairo Biennial, in fact, there were only three video artists from the region who were showing video art, and I am very proud to say two of them were Omani, Anwar Sonia and Hassan Mir. At the 9th, there were 15. We started a movement. And the group that has culminated this space has now created an area called Stav Gallery, which was a gift by the al Sarkaz family who are here today, which serves as a space for pioneering artists from the region where they can continue to practice this work. It is important to note the emergence of technology and the interesting way this group has merged its personal photographs with material and public spaces. Forms of layering developed, and at times when artists would create double-sided work with personal portraits on the back or slightly disguised family photographs. These methods have developed into something even more sophisticated. I will finish with two examples by members of the circle group, Hassan Mir and Bidur Yani. <coughs> In relation to her cross-faded images, Vidur Yami explains, old tales have no beginnings, for they are transferred from one person's memory to another's. New details and steps towards untraversed places. There are often elusive images, hidden images, and treasures waiting to be discovered. The layering here 
masks these images slightly, but shows us texts and family portraits through generations of Bedur's family, her own generation, and her chil children's generation. Hassan Mir's Reflections from Memories is a series of photographs about life in Oman during the 60s and 70s. He recalls, when I entered my grandfather's house a few years ago, I found nothing but broken walls and some windows. The emptiness of the house brought me back to the memory of my family. Then I started creating a series of photographs inspired by the soul of this old house. Mir shows us these themes in relation to architecture, as you can see here, with what he calls ghosts of the house, but also uses the same tool of layering materials such as family letters, and in this image here, his house, his grandfather's house, his son, his father, and himself. I think it is important to note that the visual material in these photographs and the presence of archives such as the Sunni Library are known throughout the Sultanate and have served as influences for artists and researchers of my generation, as can be seen in this example. There is a great deal more to be said, but I will finish here with these examples as our time is limited and I know everyone is eager to continue going through the exhibition. But I should note that I have not mentioned many of our leading spaces such as Beit Musna, Beit Baranda, Beit Zuber, or the eight museum projects that are currently being developed including the Oman National Museum, which I was on the planning team for. But I hope that after this talk we will all have a chance to speak more in person about ways in which photography and archive material relate to this and discuss the vibrant and important artistic developments which are taking place. But for now, let me extend my sincerest gratitude, Excellencies Ambassador Muna Kanan. I'd like to thank Elizabeth of Sunni Library, Ministry of Al-Kaf, and finally, the incomparable Reina. Thank you all for attending, and welcome again to Three Days of Wine.